The idea of sustainable development is a very anthropocentric concept. It looks at um, human well-being and when we consider uh, the environment within this dimension, it is almost only seen in a utilitarian sense. How can the environment sustain uh, human well-being into the future? Whereas uh, the idea of sustainability uh, that I am adopting here is uh, a concept that is uh, multi-species, or, or uh, we may also call it non-species uh, idea of sustainability, which would center the interest of all life, which would center the interest, uh, we're talking about the horse, the interest of the horse, and which would mean that the horse's well-being, animal well-being, or the well-being of any life is at the center uh, of all consideration. So it's um, the intrinsic value of all life is recognized and it's not seen as something that serves us to have a good life now and in the future. It has to be considered as having their own right, as having their own interest in a good life for now and into the future. The thoroughbred in racing industry in, in many racing nations um, feels that the public eye is on them, that there's criticism on their practices, on the way they treat the horse. And uh, in the US, the Jockey Club had commissioned a report which came to be known as the McKinsey Report, published in 2011, which in fact used the concept of sustainable development and looked at the sustainability of the industry into the future. And in this report, it was uh, the evidence has been put forward to the industry that if they want to have a sustainable future, if they want to do something about the dwindling um, popularity within the general public, they need to consider the welfare of the animal because the public is interested in the welfare of the animal. So sustainability and welfare of the thoroughbred has been brought together. And my interest then at looking at that and seeing that, I saw that the concept of sustainability being applied there was at risk as being interpreted as a concept of sustainable development rather than the concept of sustainability which encompasses and considers the interest of all life, not just of the human life. There were various uh, aspects to my study. One was the analysis of documents and of the content of websites that the main racing authorities have put up online. And uh, I was looking at how they talked about um, the welfare of the horse. And I found that very uh, strong concept of thoroughbred welfare was emerging that was very technocentric, it was very uh, medically, uh, uh, technologically utilitarian way of looking at the thoroughbred, which ignored all the other dimensions of sustainability, which we have to consider when we talk about a sustainable future for the, the horse as a species and for the horse as an individual. Then you find a lot of um, a reference to the more obvious uh, technologically, medically oriented issues that there are in the racing industry and that the racing industry wants to deal with, which are drug-related issues, which are injury-related issues, uh, injuries to the limbs, which uh, look at track surfaces, uh, which look at uh, falls and how to prevent them and what are the causes of them. But um, this is a very, very limited dimension only of horse well-being uh, at the expense of, of a much more complex and wholesome view of the horse from from the horse's perspective, which would encompass his, his whole well-being. I identified these two opposing uh, poles. One goes into the direction of the technocentric medical model. The other one goes into the direction of horse autonomy. So in terms of horse autonomy, although we do hear a lot of talk from industry participants about horse individuality, this is really not what is meant here. There is more to to it than having a strong character or liking to jump or wanting to race or having a special way of being trained. There is also the horse identity, integrity in terms of the psychological well-being. There are increasing tensions about the welfare of the horse in general. The, uh, the differences in how we view the welfare of the horse are becoming more to the fore and they're becoming more critical and being uh, played out more and more. In my interview with um, representatives of the thoroughbred racing industry and of animal representatives of the animal protection um, organizations, I asked them to define uh, thoroughbred welfare. The main 
aspects of what that welfare entailed, there didn't seem to be too many differences, in fact. So I had to find another way of really finding out where these differences come from, what the differences are, because obviously there were differences in their understanding. So I used, in fact, images of um, ordinary race day scenes and asked industry participants and representatives from animal welfare organizations to simply describe these images. And when presented with images of race day scenes, the way the horse was seen there, the way the horse was described, there were markedly very significant differences between those words used by representatives of the thoroughbred racing industry and those by representatives of animal protection organizations. Often descriptions from representatives of the thoroughbred racing industry described it more as a usual scene. For example, an uh, image of a horse that appears to be nervous or excited may be described as simply feeling the excitement of the race, just like a human participant, just like a human sports person would feel butterflies, uh, like a horse being a horse. Where tech was sometimes described, but when it was seen that uh, a bridle or a bit obviously had an impact on the horse's mouth, it was sometimes played down. Uh, sometimes it was said, yes, um, this is a visual that I've always struggled with, not necessarily because it has an impact on the welfare of the horse, but because of the image that it projects to the public. Um, when these images were described by um, representatives of animal protection organizations, uh, they seem to be more aware of a more whole image of what is going on in the horse's environment and what the causes are. But it also has to be said that there were nuances and differences between individuals of, uh, who were representing animal protection organizations. And you could almost say there could be something like a sliding scale from uh, having a greater awareness or sensitivity or concern for certain issues. Um, and others may not have it seen as an issue or seen it as something that is just the way things are and that are part of training and are accepted as normal. So the way a horse behaves, so the way the horse are seen on these images, which for some who have a higher level of sensitivity for what is happening to the horse may be of concern to them, whereas for others who are coming from the racing industry normalize it. They see it as a normal um, activity, a normal aesthetic of the horse that is nothing to be concerned about because this is just the way things are and this is the way things have always been seen. Seeing that there are those different views on welfare, it doesn't seem that there is a level of communication possible. It seems also the more knowledge we gain, for in particular through cognitive ethology, we understand the horse in different ways that haven't been seen before. In particular, we're even starting to question whether the horse is a flight animal or not. So these ideas are more readily taken up by people coming from the horse's perspective, coming from the animal protection movement. So whatever happens, whether the industry moves ahead and starts to change the uh, worst excesses that, we can, that the public is appalled about, like breakdowns on the racetrack, so things that we can see immediately, they will, it seems they never be able to catch up with the developments that are happening in our thinking about how we perceive the horse in different ways, what we learn about the horse, how people want to protect the horse. So the industry appears to be always limping behind if they're not proactive in really changing their perspective, if at all it is possible, in fact, to still maintain an industry like that with the new knowledge that we have about horse welfare. Animal welfare science comes up with different models of animal welfare. They may be in conflict with each other. For example, from the livestock industry, we know of the models of welfare, which one is based on the, or addresses mainly the basic health and functioning of the animal. Uh, the next model looks more at the affective states of the animal. And then we have the concept of naturalness, which penetrates the welfare debate. So 
depending on which welfare model we adhere to, uh, we come to different conclusions about what it is that we can do and about the ways we can do certain things with animals. Um, but important to realize is that whichever model we apply or whichever model we follow is not really based in science, it is in fact based on our value system. So we decide based on our values, based on our cultural background, which model we want to follow and then that makes us decide in which way we want to treat animal or what is wrong or what is right to do with an animal. But we have to lay open our value systems and then explain why we came to that decision and then that way it can contribute to the public discourse and we can say whether we agree or not. As much of the discussion is actually not even aware of which value system we're applying. We're not even aware that we do apply a particular value system. And we have to be very much aware what value system it is that we are following here.